Bonus time on the Ben Jarofsky Show as I speak. It's Friday, October 1st, 2021. Lord knows when you're actually listening to this. I hope you're listening this closer to October 1st, 2021, because we're talking about things that are happening right now in real time. We're talking basketball. I'm not even going to ask my distinguished guest to introduce him, because I'm just going to introduce him. He's Chicago's finest bookie. Yes. The man, the myth, the legend. Benji the bookie has returned uh, to the Ben Jarofsky Show to talk NBA basketball. His real name is Benjamin Hall. But we call him Benji the Bookie because that's what he is. Welcome back, Benji. Uh, I think being a bookie is illegal, Ben. I'm not a bookie. I'm a gambler. <laughs> Folks, I'm just joking. IRS and CIA and anybody else who would crack down on him. That's right. I don't need, uh, I don't need my phones tapped. He, he's also a leftist. Oh, my Which is mm. double reason to go after him. Well, uh, he, not, maybe not so much in this administration, but I'm worried about maybe the future. Yes, we're going to uh, hold back from a overtly political discussion, although I can see us going there. Uh, there's a chance that uh, Sergio Vicente will join us. Who knows? He may uh, pop in. We uh, welcome him if he does. Uh, and uh, we're going to have an NBA discussion. People are going, wait, what about Miles? Well, Miles is working today, so he couldn't make it. Uh, so Benji and I will do this. All right, Benji. Mm. NBA uh, for me means uh, my beloved Chicago Bulls. But uh, before we get to the Bulls, I would love to get your thoughts, and as I said, uh, Ben, she's a bit of a lefty, on uh, NBA players and the vaccine. Uh, this has been a popular topic all week uh, on my uh, live cast of my live show. I've been venting, railing, and ranting about a handful of players, and uh, before we went on the air, you pointed out something to me that I really should take pause and think about and reflect upon that while I rant and rail about Andrew Wiggins and Kyrie Irving and Bradley Beal, uh, who want, haven't been vaccinated, 95%, as in 9 and a 5, percent of the NBA is vaccinated, which is not as good as the 99% of the WNBA uh, that's vaccinated, but it's pretty damn good. Uh, so I should stop complaining about Andrew Wiggins, Bradley Beal, and Kyrie Irving. Uh, is that uh, your general opinion? No, they should uh, they should receive some criticism for sure for making a, a very strange and selfish choice. But I think the the criticism, and I I cannot believe I have not heard one word about this anywhere. And I actually had to um, Google it to find out what's going on. Like, but why is the players' union on a vote? not mandating that everybody be vaccinated. I mean, wh why let the 5% dictate this weird problem for all of the league? It's about league safety, the player safety. Uh, why not let the 95% choose to be safe? I can answer that question. Do you want me to answer that question? Yeah. Uh, it gets into the whole issue of the union being the bad guy or the NBA being the bad guy. So follow me. And this is, this is, this goes beyond, this is a union issue that well beyond the NBA players association. Uh, it's also an issue that many progressive unions here in the city of Chicago uh, are facing. So it's this, it's like this, the people who generally run the union realize that you need a vaccination, but they also know that many of their rank and file, even if it's just 5% of their rank and file are against it. In some cases, like the police union, the Fraternal Order of Police, it's probably closer to 50%. Who knows? Uh, but they're, uh, so if you, the union, force a mandate down the throats of, even if it's 5% or 10%, you're going to have 5% or 10% of your collective bargaining unit mad at you. So, so better strategically. Always gonna be, there's always going to be a percentage mad at you on any decision. Right. That's that's true. But this but, is a so health if issue. If, if I, it was I get a, you. If it was. But a, I'm just, let me just finish. I'm just if it finish was a question, this. real quick. If it was a question of safety in another way that hasn't been misinformed and politicized, uh, you know, whether it's like you have to wear a seatbelt. Well, that's a bad example because that's personal. But that causes someone else danger, including yourself. And 95 percent of the union voted for it. Nobody's going to be mad that the five percent were misrepresented, but well, for some silly reason, the vaccine is treated in this weird light. Well, now now we'll move beyond the tactics of unions. 
uh, and to get into the overall brainwashing of America, which I completely agree with you. But just let me finish my thought. So yeah. uh, their attitude is let the uh, NBA be the bad guy here, and then uh, we will turn to uh, the Bradley Beals and the Andrew Wiggins saying, hey, it's, it's not us, it's them. So that's their tack, That's their reason to answer your first question. Now you're getting into the brainwashing of America. And uh, it, Benji, I've been talking about this for a couple weeks now. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Uh, the, the attitude that Americans have toward the vaccination and their opposition to it and the reasons that they uh, offer for it, which for an old lefty like me are baffling. One example that's on my mind, get your response. Uh, Draymond Green yesterday of the uh, Golden State Warriors uh, was justifying, was saying that he was not going to uh, tell Andrew Wiggins what to do. Andrew Wiggins is his teammate who uh, won't uh, get vaccinated, even though he may miss at least half the season because there's a rule in the city of San Francisco that you have to be vaccinated to get into the basketball arena. And Draymond Green says it's his, it is uh, Andrew Wiggins' liberty, his personal liberty, his freedom not to get vaccinated. And the government can't tell us uh, what we do. And I thought that's uh, what, what a free country was in America. And, and then he said, I don't want to, this has become politi politicized. I don't want to take a political stand. When he had just finished offering up a Republican talking point, in the same vein that he was saying, I don't want to get political, he was political. Only he was Republican political. And he may not even realize he was offering up a Republican talking point. The whole notion of liberty uh, in this matter, Benji, is made up. The NBA players have to urinate into a jar mm -hmm. and get their They're piss drug tested. drug tested. Mm -hmm. What about that liberty, Draymond Green? Yeah. What about that sacred liberty? That you oh, voluntarily I mean, give up. Go ahead. Yeah, it, this is just uh, a lack of understanding of what <laughs> our government does and what it represents and what our what the rules and laws and liberties really are. It's it's, and then uh, you know, like you said, a bunch of I don't know it, misinformation confusing people more. I don't know where he gets his information. But the misinformation is so widespread now, uh, and quite frankly, you know, if you really want to hear a political view on this, I think uh, if our government was smart, it would start finding the living crap out of the any any social media outlet or news outlet that spreads um, wrong information about this virus because it is potentially causing death in our country, not to mention everything else that goes along with it. Um, I mean, if the FCC could uh, fine Howard Stern a million dollars every time he swore, ooh, like that really did damage to people, then we surely could have escalating fines for every Facebook misinformation out there or Twitter or whatever, uh, on and on and on. And, you know... Uh, it would be fun to see how fast that they would uh, fix this problem. Well, I think that uh, that's, a, by the way, uh, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, and that's a great analogy. Uh, Howard Stern back in the day would be fined all the time. And I ne again, never heard MAGA or no. uh, their antecedents complaining about Howard Stern being fined. No. Uh, if anything, they were saying they good or cleaning up uh, right. the airwaves. Family values. <laughs> uh, family values. And the Democrats at the Tipper Gore, or at the time, remember, the Democrats jumped aboard that bandwagon for a while. Yeah. So you're, you're absolutely correct. Uh, and similarly, Liberty, I've never heard them proclaiming the rights of people not to have to take drug tests. I mean, I don't so, have the right to spit on someone. So, I mean, duh. I don't have the right to punch someone in the face or to stab them or to do many things to cause injury or harm to people. Uh, so if all of a sudden, because I'm unvaccinated, my breath becomes potentially deadly, then I should, I'm the problem. Yeah. Well, I'm, but we, I'm, don't see, uh, we don't, we don't have any self-sacrifice in this country anymore, but so shame I, on I, I for saying that. I, I have a, I note that, uh, I saw a poll the other day, which I thought was interesting. And, uh, you know, I always put a little asterisk next to a poll because, uh, it's all dependent on how it's phrased. I understand. 
but it said 51% of Americans are the people who, answer, who respond to the poll favor ma- uh, mandates, uh, That's right. vaccine mandates, 51%, and it was 34%. It was kind of, kind of a trouncing. 34% are against them, and 14, I think it was like 14%, I hope those numbers add up, I'm doing this from memory, uh, had no opinion, which is, ah, uh, yes, my favorite, the no opinion people. Uh, and um, so I believe that most uh, folks in this country are on your side. Mm. And again, the power of MAGA has done a brilliantly brainwashed uh, Americans uh, on this issue and cowered. Uh, many uh, members of the Democratic Party. Now, it's good to see that, like, for instance, uh, in the city Don't of Chicago. Don't forget the media. The entire media is at blame here, as it always is, except you. Why do you, why do you say that? Well, I mean, they choose the stories. The stories are, oh, there's upset MAGA people, blah, 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 blah. They're liberty, liberty. You know, they, 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 they give them credence. Instead, if the story was every day that, there's a faction of our country that is causing us uh, a financial ruin, of uh, death, destruction, and they're not playing along nicely. And that they're, to just, you know, speak the truth of what everybody else is feeling on a daily basis, uh, we would probably be at 80% pro mask. But they don't do that. They don't tell that story. Well, what do you think about their. Uh... What do you think about the emphasis they put on the Andrew Wiggins of the world? Again, Andrew Wiggins is a forward for the Golden State Warriors, an uh, ordinary player, not a star, although he was once a number one draft choice, uh, proving yeah. Ben's point that the draft is totally overrated. We'll avoid going down that road for the moment. Uh, and uh, he's decided that he has he's done his own research, uh, and uh, he doesn't want to get vaccinated. So, so much emphasis is put on him as mm. opposed to the other uh, 95%. And I'm guilty of that as well. I've spent so much time talking about Bradley Beal mm-hmm. uh, and Kyrie Irving, who two other NBA players who decided they don't want to get vaccinated. And again, not thinking of the 95% who are. So do you think that uh, people like me and the rest of the media are guilty of uh, overemphasizing the uh, reluctance of the Andrew Wiggins of the world? Or do you think that's a story worth pursuing? Um, no, I think we should focus on Andrew Wiggins. I mean, he's he's been a career disappointment in every pretty much every level. So uh, this just kind of goes right along with it. Um, I don't know. It, I mean, he's a Kansas, I wouldn't say graduate, played one year. But uh, I don't think he got a medical degree there. And if he did, someone needs to look into what Kansas is teaching in medicine. I don't know where he did his research, but uh, I would say that there's no doubt that uh, he's an expert by any stretch of the imagination. So when the majority of the entire medical world in, in the world and in America, and not to mention the history of all the statistics on the vaccine so far that have been proven versus who hasn't gotten and that they're dying and having, I mean, what plan, where did he find anything that was v- valid? I mean, who does research on Twitter? or Facebook. I'm sorry. Uh, all you got to do is call some doctors. It's not, con- you got to, you got an NBA team full of doctors and a league full of doctors. Why not consult them, you moron? So, so instead of even having an argument about what he's saying, just, just immediately say he's being absolutely stupid, selfish, and potentially causing damage to his teammates. Is that a team player? No. But not only his teammates, the rest of the league and everyone else involved with the team and the league. And because of that, he should actually lose his contract. And they should force the players union to abide by this with a vote from the entire union to say, we are not going to back this quote unquote baloney about individual freedom this is about safety. Uh, Benji, you would last for about one second uh, in the, the union with that attitude. And uh, well, by the way, I just want to point out. union that's the point. But put it up to a vote. Let, that, isn't that what unions, isn't the concept of a union to be to, to represent the masses as opposed to going individually? Now, if the safety of the masses is being compromised by a few individuals or the union itself is being looked upon frownly, uh, badly because of a few bad eggs, Chicago police, uh, 
um, then it's the union's responsibility to protect the union, the many, not the few. I don't know if the unions have just lost that messaging, but it would be, I would just like to hear the media talk about it that way. Well, I, How about I, the I many do, over the few? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do believe uh, that, I, be, I believe that the brainwashing of America on the issue of vaccines uh, has been so successful. Very that successful. Even people who get, that even people who get the vaccine mm -hmm. feel a little reluctant, many of them, sure. uh, to speak yeah, out against people who don't. So like, for instance, LeBron James said, well, I uh, was skeptical at first about the vaccine. I did my research and I decided to get it, but I don't want to impose my views on other people. <laughs> like, he's also got a really big monthly nut he's got to cover. That was his research, uh, I think. I got to keep oh. getting paid. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah. You know what's funny about that? I said this day at the show. Oh, then we're going to get to basketball, actual basketball. Although I think my political listeners are really loving this more than the basketball conversation. But uh, what I what I find so funny about LeBron, uh, who is again, I say this all the time, uh, one of the greatest players uh, in the history of the NBA. He's definitely in my top ten. He's one of the most. Um, how do I put this? Uh, determined and willful uh, individuals I've ever seen. He's a champion at anything he does. He's going to be huge in Hollywood, in business world. He's made a fortune off the court as well as on the court. And he does that by imposing his will on other people. Uh, Benji, he doesn't do that by sitting back and go, well, you know, you have your opinion. I got my, you do what you want to do. No, he demands what's best for him in any situation. And in that famous moment, did you know? I know all basketball play. All basketball fans remember this moment I'm talking about. The last time the Cleveland Cavaliers were in the NBA Finals, they were playing the Golden State Warriors. I believe it was Game One. Mm -hmm. My memory is Game One. It was coming down mm -hmm. to the wire. Uh, there was a missed free throw by the um, J.R. Smith the Cavaliers. They got the rebound. Uh, J.R. Smith got the rebound, yep. and they had to get a shot up to win the game. And J.R. Smith. His brain froze, and he started dribbling out the clock. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. And they, won money they on went that. into overtime as a result. They lost, and then they got swept. Yep. LeBron James. Do you think LeBron James had an attitude toward J.R. Smith that he had toward Andrew Wiggins? Do you think, ah, you know, you make a mistake. What's the big deal? We lost the game. Now we're going to get swept. You're a good guy, and I, you know. I uh, protect your liberty to do whatever you want with the basketball in the closing seconds. No, he was livid, and he showed that he was livid. Yeah, he broke it. It's so hand. interesting. In this case, he's so brainwashed. Go ahead. Man. Well, that was at the end of the season. Draymond is, by all it, you know, accounts, it seems like he's the leader of the Golden State team as far as a personality, and so uh, if they're, you know, they're counting on Wiggins to be a key part of, a, you know, something potentially exciting this year or next year or whatever, right? Um, his, he, he, he's hard to move because of his crazy salary, so they can't really just ditch him. And so I think he's tiptoeing around just the personal, uh, you know, he doesn't, he wants to ingratiate himself with his teammates and know that I got your back, even if it's a dumb decision. So it's it's hard to put anything on Draymond. He's just being a teammate. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's move on for Draymond for and let's get to my beloved Chicago Bulls. Ooh. I was very excited by the uh, moves that the Chicago Bulls have made uh, during the off season. And folks who've listened to Benji and myself uh, and Miles go at it know this: I am a Bulls fan. I bleed Bulls red. I pretty much jump on the bandwagon and wave the flag, whatever stupid decision the Bulls make. <laughs> And much that way, I'm like a Chicago voter. Oh, the mayor said it. It must be good. Uh, Benji, on the other hand, is very cold-hearted, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to tell you this. What? He's a straight. Uh, he's straight up. He, he does his analysis. He does his homework. He's not even a Bulls fan. I'm not even sure which NBA team he roots for. I don't think he roots for any NBA team. He roots for the, the bottom line of the bet he made, although he's not a bookie IRS. Uh, and uh, so in that way, he's uh, an analytics kind of guy. So, uh, Mr. Analytics kind of guy, let's break down what the Chicago Bulls did in the offseason. Let's see if my uh, usual optimism uh, is met uh, by you. Uh, so, first of all, overall, uh, your thoughts on what the Bulls did to improve themselves uh, over the offseason. Before we start, do you have 
any idea what the the Vegas over under uh, they've set for the win total for the Bulls is? Let's see how close. I do get. not know because I, unlike uh, Benji the bookie, I am not a bookie. Although Benji's not a bookie either, IRS. Um, <laughs> But I would guess, okay, so just for folks who are not basketball fans, this is the over, there's 82 games in a regular season, ladies and gentlemen. Utter mediocrity is 41 wins. You win 41, you lose 41. Uh, the, a really outstanding team wins 60 games. A really good team wins 50 games. Uh, utterly me, utter mediocrity is 41. Everything below that is bad. So I would say uh, Vegas is very pessimistic about the Chicago Bulls. I would say that the over-under is 40. Close. Uh, Vegas is a little uh, more optimistic than you think. It's 42 and a half. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Vegas. The Chicago Bulls moved heaven and earth, ladies and gentlemen, to get championship-type players, or not championship and playoff-caliber players in Vegas. Like, this, this goes right into my point about why I've not been that happy with what they've done in the last year well, seven months, let's say, uh, with their moves is that they've sacrificed a lot of draft picks um, and some semi-decent players that were good role players on good contracts for this win-now roster, supposedly, and then the consensus among everyone who does analysis in the NBA is that they're a barely 500 team. <laughs> Yay! So that's, uh, I don't know, if you're going to give up your future, you'd think you'd be in the 50 range at least to have a shot. But nope, they, they were really, they, they had to get back to 500. That was just like mission critical, I guess, from the top. I would love to see the memo on that one. All right. Uh, that's a lot of sarcasm being thrown at my beloved Bulls, but a bookie. All right. Uh, but I like to do some, break good, it. some good things that, okay. that I like. Well, let's, let's deal with the good things. Yeah, uh, let's, the let's give the, the, the fans some optimistic uh, things. Okay, so uh, the <laughs> offense should be really good, and they should be fun to watch. So that's exciting. Um, mm -hmm. For you know, They haven't been that fun for a long time to watch. Um, I would take anything, that out of that sentence. They haven't okay, been sure. fun to watch. You don't need the Since that Derek in that Rose, sense. Probably. But even that was a sloggy team. Um, but he was exciting. Yeah. So they they got uh, a very offensive team. They got they were really bad at passing in a couple of years ago, and all of a sudden they got a center who's got a good range. He can he can pull out to the three point line. He can go down low. He's he's really wicked on offense, and he's actually a, a really good passer. So that's exciting. Talk about Vukovic. Vucevic, yep. Yeah. And then uh, Lonzo Ball now at point guard, who's uh, a, a become actually a quite a good uh, outside shooter from three. Um, uh, he's an amazing passer. He, he doesn't need the ball in his hand, which is huge with play with Zach Levine. Um, but yet he can also facilitate really well and move. So they're going to have a lot of movement and they're going to have a lot of passing. Uh, and the only thing about Lonzo that's a little down is he, he's not that great at driving to the rim and scoring inside and drawing free throws, but he shouldn't have to do that that much on this team. Um, uh, and then you got uh, DeRozan, who uh, is uh, not, he can't, his range isn't out to the three point line, but he's a really good mid range shooter. So those are kind of nice to have in the mix, but you, ideally you'd, you'd want him to be, you know, have the, his range all the way to the three point line to spread the court even further. Um, but he's also a very, very good passer. I mean, I think he averaged like six assists last year. So they got like, Alonzo had like eight assists. Vucevic is like four assists for a center. You got uh, DeRozan with his six assists. And Zach Levine uh, has become a much better passer after, you know, this first five years. I don't know if you knew how to throw a pass. So that's pretty good. Um, and he, I, I think any, any, whenever these guys go and they play on the Olympic team, the, 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 the uh, collective practice time and camaraderie with all these other great guys seems to always make people better. And he seemed to have got a lot better just from that Olympic experience. And, uh, I, that's going to boost his confidence and his game is certainly evolving uh, way past what I thought it would be. And so, 
you know, he's very exciting and obviously he's a very fun player to watch too. So, so on offense, this team is going to be uh, pretty spectacular. I mean, they will be a top 10 offense in the league probably. All right. So, so think about what you're saying in the course of an 82 game season and what Vegas is saying. Mm-hmm. Well, it's completely contradicts what Vegas says. And I'll explain uh, what I've heard from as long as for at least 50 years of following basketball is that uh, defense wins. But in reality, the real tough defense, only with a few exceptions, doesn't start until the playoffs on a really consistent, steady basis. It's, it's a long season. There's a lot of traveling. There's back-to-back games. Uh, players are – there's load management issues, so players are, are, are held back. Uh, and uh, then there's also injuries. So the notion that teams are just going to be playing really, you know, chest-to-chest defense every, every play of the game – uh, is exaggerated. So what's going to win? What's going to prevail in a long course of a season is good offense. You got to score. Basketball. Last I heard, it was the team that scored the most points won the game. So what you're actually saying when you articulated very well, I want to give you credit for uh, all the Bulls' additions over the off season to make it a more potent offense bodes well for the regular season. Now the issue is, will it bode well for the playoffs? But with the Bulls, we got to get through the regular season before we can even talk about the playoffs because this Bulls team has not been in the playoffs since I want to say 2016. I may have got the year off because it's so long ago I forgot. And uh, so, Benji, I would say that what you just described is a team that could potentially win 50 games. No. 50 games. No. Uh, and then fall apart in a playoff. Go ahead. Well, I mean, as good as much credit as I just gave them on the offensive end, uh, you know, I said top ten. I, I, they're not a top five offense. Um, I don't think. I mean, maybe there's outside chance they could get there, but uh, they're so horrible on defense that uh, it doesn't really matter. And that's that's why you get to a number that's close to five hundred. So. Um, you can just look at the Knicks last year for an example of a team that basically had crap offense and just really, really good defense, and they finished over 500. So defense can win. Um, I mean, it's it, it's I, it's silly to me when people say you know they try to determine whether offense is going to win you a championship or defense is going to win you a championship. It's almost always a combination that wins you the championship. Whether you're stronger at one or the other is kind of irrelevant but you, you you have to be really good at least one of them and, and then above average at the other if not elite so um but yeah so they're they're gonna they're they're probably gonna be above 500 but not anything crazy plus the east and the nba in general is really strong this i mean the teams have gotten deeper the rosters have gotten uh, much stronger, I think, and so the competition is a lot harder. I disagree with you on that last point. Okay. Uh, about the East. Okay. And I, I just, I've had been. Uh, Why? I look at the East, I see the Milwaukee Bucks. Yep. Brooklyn. I see defending champions. I Top see two teams the, in the uh, NBA. Uh, the Brooklyn uh, Nets, who yep. probably without. Uh, injury to Kyrie Irving would have been in the finals. Uh, yeah. So they're probably better than the Bucs on paper anyway. Yes, uh, I agree. And then, you know, I mean, okay, Miami got Kyrie, uh, excuse me, uh, Kyle Lowry. Yep. So uh, they underperformed last year. They sure so did. I don't see any other great teams uh, in the East outstanding, such power pack team. Philadelphia 76ers are a bunch of head cases right now. Ben Simmons, we don't, he's, he says he won't play for them. Now Joel Embiid's mad at him. He's mad yeah. at Embiid. So now even if, if they do talk him into coming back, got to deal with that uh, issue. And, uh, but they're still they a win under- team. Even without Yeah, they Simmons, won 50 games probably. last year. I don't, with, without Ben Simmons, I don't think they're winning 50 games this year. You know, Atlanta, we'll Atlanta had a nice run in the playoffs. Uh, and and they, an amazing they, second half of the season. Yeah, so let's give them credit for that. On the other hand, they faced uh, New York Knicks in round one, a complete overachieving team in the regular season that, like most Tom Thibodeau teams, comes back to earth really fast in the playoffs. Yes. So they're not exactly uh, the Bill Russell Celtics. They did beat uh, the and then they played the basket case known as the Philadelphia 76ers, where Ben Simmons was so afraid to shoot that he passed on a layup. So again... 
it's a couple asterisks on their on their run. So, I, Benji, I don't see the great competition in the East except, as I said, two outstanding teams in Brooklyn and Milwaukee. Your reaction? Well, I think Atlanta's a 48-50 win team. I think Philly's a 48-50 win team. I think Boston's a 48 win team. Um, I think uh, um, the Knicks are probably going to be a 44 to 45 win team. Uh, they got deeper and uh, they've solved a lot of their problems. Plus Thibodeau will, will ride them until they fall down. Um, <laughs> so, you know, win at any cost over there. Uh, I, th- I think uh, even Charlotte is an interesting team. They're probably below the bulls. Um, I think, uh, uh, I'm missing some teams here. I'm sorry, but uh, here, let me look at the. You're not missing any team worth mentioning. Well, you haven't mentioned no, there, Miami. There, there's other good. There's actually other good teams. That's what's crazy. You haven't mentioned Miami. Yeah, Miami is a is a 45 to 50 win team. Um, so, so I mean that that's like 10 teams I just named, um, and and even the even the quote unquote. Uh, you know, Toronto should be. They they had the the year from hell last year. They they played in Tampa Bay. Who wants to live in Tampa Bay for six months? That's got to just drive you crazy as an NBA player. Um, not to mention they had a, a million injuries and COVID stuff. So they they haven't even though they lost. Uh, you know, um, uh, what's his face? The Lowry. The, I, I I don't. I mean, I think they're still going to be tough. I got them at, right around the Bulls. I think the Wizards uh, without. Westbrook actually got better. Um, so I think they're a 35 one team. And Wait, even the Wizards the with Bradley Beal, their star yeah. player who's not vaccinated, that Wizards? Just to make sure we're getting well, that Wizards. Well, if Bradley Beal can't play, then that's then they'll go yeah. down. And, or sure. if he gets the entire team sick with uh, COVID, uh, that, that Wizard team. Yeah, that was, uh, talking about? yeah. Yeah. And then I that mean, then the last... I just want to make sure we're talking about that wizard team. Yeah, go ahead. And then yeah. and then the Pacers, uh, you know, health wise, are about like the Bulls. So that's yeah, that's well. a lot of teams. It's In other words, what you're saying is like there's two outstanding. You're basically with me. You're saying there's two outstanding teams in the yes. East, and then everybody else is in the mix. And yeah, see how it plays three out. Tiers. I'd say there's well, there's there's the, there's the bottom tier we didn't talk about. Uh, Hello, Detroit. The heat the <laughs> but uh, I think yeah, there's the two teams at the top, and then there's a, the, that tier with you know the Philly, Miami, you know mix, and then there's the Bulls and the Knicks and the, the Pacers and the blah blah blahs. Yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give you two names. We'll close with this and get uh, your response to this. You had when the Bulls oh, first. Uh, yeah. Can I talk about my surprise on the Bulls real quick before we do that? Because well, I don't want to where I was it. going. That was well, you're where right. I was oh, going. Okay. I'm so excited. So uh, there were two names. Yeah. That uh, Benji commented on me, uh, commented to me uh, during the off season, and one name is Demar Derozan. And uh, to, when the Bulls got DeMar, DeMar DeRozan, uh, who's about 32 years old, I want to say, he's been around the league, played for Toronto, played for San Antonio. He averages about mm. 20 points a game. And I've seen him make so many spectacular plays against the Bulls. So I was ec- ecstatic. And I, I think I sent a text to Benji, DeMar DeRozan, at which point Benji goes, overpaid, which was his reaction to DeMar DeRozan. Then the Bulls picked up a guy that probably nobody other than basketball geeks uh, have ever heard of. <laughs> right. And <laughs> Benji goes, oh, Thank this you. guy is a good uh, a, well, a good pickup for the Bulls. So, Benji, why don't you start with the players that nobody's ever heard of, and then we'll get to DeMar DeRozan. Go ahead. All right. So this uh, you're referring to Elise Johnson. Uh, yes. I don't even know if I have enough saying his name right. He's that obscure. Um, A-L-I-Z-E. Elise Johnson. Yeah. Go ahead. Missouri State grad. Uh, six seven guy. He's a brick house. I mean, he he reminds me a lot of Jimmy. Uh, and wait do you see him play? He, it's only his like his third year. I think Indiana drafted him in the second late late second round. You know, was, and he's been mired in the in the G League really, and you know had had a cup of coffee a couple times for each of the teams. But last year Brooklyn snagged him at the end of the year. You know, and they had a pretty tough roster. I'm surprised he didn't get any playoff time, but he had a 20-20 game with them, a 20.20 rebound game with them as a 6-7 guy. So in the G League, they didn't play a lot of games last year, but he he shot like 58%. He plays incredible defense. He was on the best team 
He averaged 13 rebounds a game. He's not a big time scorer, but he's just a, he, and he's a decent passer. He's just really good uh, all around player. And I think he's going to surprise, especially with Patrick Williams being out now for a while. I, I hope he gets some run because at, otherwise it's Stanley Johnson. And I think the league has seen enough of him. Uh, he's uh, whatever. I don't know what he brings to the table anymore, but uh, I would love to see at least get some playing time. I, uh, he's the one for, for Bulls fans to keep an eye on. And then uh, you were pessimistic about DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, I mean, DeMar DeRozan is, he's he's like, uh, he's like one of those old baseball guys where you'd look and uh, they had uh, good statistics and then they were always on losing teams. Um, I'm not saying that DeMar DeRozan is a loser, but uh, his statistics don't tell the story until you look, deeper into the stuff like when he's on the court it's like almost always a net negative right because his defense is so bad and uh so <laughs> he he'll 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 confuse uh people that just maybe look at a box score or watch him play i mean he seems like he's a good player if you're not like focused on like what he's doing on the defensive end if they, it's harder to it, it's easy to see a guy make a bucket or a pass and harder to see a guy you know, m- missing assignment on defense. So it's, he's, he's often uh, overappreciated. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that's uh, the surprising good news and the surprising bad news. And I'll close by saying this about all that. What, what's your I mean, season prediction? Uh, I didn't hear it. Oh, well, I, uh, I'm going to wait. Uh, no, I think I'm going with 75 this year. <laughs> Every year we have this, we have a prediction. I uh, collect, uh, there's no money involved, IRS. No money involved. No, I just it's... take people's predictions of how many games the Bulls are going to win. And I am always, always, A-L-W-A-Y-S, always the one with the highest number of wins <laughs> in the prediction. And I have never, N-E-V-E-R, won this pool. Uh, Benji may have won it. The, uh, no. There's a certain Bob who has won it in the past, and I realize because he, he cheats, he figured us out. Uh, and uh, he always puts uh, a, a high number and a low number, and so he kind of covers himself there. And we're not oh, going to let him do twice. that anymore. Really? Yeah. He, yeah. Oh, he I didn't know uh, and he, well, you know, a MAGA guy. What do you want? Uh, and um, so, uh, so my prediction is fifty. My prediction is fifty wins for the Chicago Bulls this year. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, if if. Philadelphia without Ben Simmons in your mind is a forty-eight to fifty win team. Yeah. You got yeah. if if you if they're a forty-eight to fifty win team, then good God, the Bulls are a forty-eight to fifty well, win they, team. Ben, they do have a guy who was second in MVP last year. Yeah, and Bead, <laughs> who has never played a full season in his life, can't do back to back games. Probably will sit out at least twelve games if he's not injured. Otherwise, you got. Seth Curry, not Steph Curry. Seth Curry is your star on that team. Your so, star up with Tobias Harris. And uh, don't forget, they got another Kentucky guard who's going to break out this year, Maxie. Yeah, He's yeah. going to be great. That's something you all should know about Benji. Uh, he loves Kentucky a little too much. Anyway, I'll close by saying this. I agree with that. When Benji ever says something that I don't like, my attitude is like, oh. He doesn't know anything. Don't listen to Benji. <laughs> but when he says something I do like, I quote him. Hey, guys, I'm just telling you, at least Johnson, Benji, the bookie, says he's going to be good. I'm a little in this way, uh, Benji, like MAGA when it comes to NBA players. So when NBA players uh, justifiably, in my humble opinion, speak out against police brutality, MAGA says, shut up and dribble. When a handful, and it's just a handful of NBA players say they don't want the vaccine, MAGA's like, listen to Andrew Wiggins. He knows. Are you comparing me then to, if you're MAGA, then are you, am I like <laughs> Russian troll? Uh, yeah, you're a Russian troll. <laughs> Giving you misinformation. Benji, <laughs> the Russian troll. All right, we've run out of time. Benji the Bookie, thank you so much. Uh, folks, you go to Vegas right now and place your bets based on whatever he said. Just kidding, IRS. It's 43 not wins. Bookie. It's my pick. It's slightly over. 43 wins for Benji. I got 50. We'll see who is right. Thank you very Thanks. much, Benji. I'm Ben Jarofsky. Take care, everybody. Mm-hmm.